Alarming reports on the increasing rates of screen time and its negative effects have captivated American readers over the past few years. Like cancer-causing cell phone signals or BPA plastic, screens are everywhere and used every day by almost everyone. And according to a few thought leaders, they're bad. Really bad. It leads to things like obesity, aggression, teen suicide ideation, and more. Unfortunately, the research supporting these claims suffers from dilution. The category screen time is so broad that it can't possibly lead to many useful findings, if any. My name is Henry Kronk, editor at eLearning Inside, and this week on Ed Technically, I'm going to look at what screen time actually is and dig a little deeper on what the findings from surveys on screen time actually mean. A recent study that received a good deal of exposure defined screen time for children as, quote, television, videotapes, digital video disc, game devices, computer, cell phone, smartphone, tablet, electronic reader, and children's learning devices, end quote. Speaking with Vox, Stanford Psychology Department Chair Anthony Wagner said, quote, The literature is a wreck. Is there anything that tells us there's a causal link? That our media use behavior is actually altering our cognition and underlying neurological function or neurobiological processes? The answer is we have no idea. There's no data. In other words, most studies report a correlation, not a causation, between screen time and the negative effects it causes. To highlight this, eLearning Inside got in touch with Daniel J, content specialist at One Class, who recently conducted his own experiment. I wanted to see, since our audience are students, is students, I wanted to see kind of the effect that you know, an additional hour of screen time or just how much screen time would affect uh, students' grades. Uh, so I created a very quick survey. I wanted to make it as easy and as simple as possible, but essentially it just asked um, how much or how many hours per day they were using their phone um, in the last seven days. And so given that, well, I wanted to see if that had an impact on their grades. So I then asked, uh, for their letter grades in school, like for the cumulative GPA. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I came across the idea. In the end, 875 first-year undergrads answered Jay's survey. Uh, I kind of had an idea. I thought that um, the more students use their, their phones, that you know, the higher the screen time was, the lower their letter grade would be. Um, but, you know, Looking at the, the data as soon as it came in, just kind of on the surface level, um, I compared kind of the averages of the students' grades who spent, you know, seven or seven plus hours uh, a day uh, versus students who spent maybe one to two hours a day on their, on their phones. And um, the averages were actually very similar in terms of their letter grades. Uh, so that's something that kind of threw me off, uh, something that I wasn't expecting. But um, if I looked, kind of, I, I wanted to dig deeper into the data and the numbers, and um, I found some interesting insights in terms of like the variance, uh, how much their grades would vary with, um, given how much, uh, I sorry, depending on how much time they spend on their phones, um, kind of like the lowest overall grade that each section of uh, screen time has. Um, and yeah, so I, in, in the first kind of look or the first look at the surface um, of the data, there wasn't anything too compelling or something or anything that was aligned with what I expected before going into the survey. The three biggest findings um, that I uncovered was first that the percentage of students that have zero to one hours of screen time um, per day have an overall grade, uh, or sorry, that have an overall grade of a C or a D was 0%. Uh, so these students that barely spent time on their phones, um, there were none of them that had a C or a D as a letter grade. But when the screen time goes to eight plus hours, uh, when a student spends 
eight plus hours um, a day on their phones. That number actually skyrocketed to 17%, so which is 19 people. So it just shows that um, the students who are spending more time on their phones uh, had a higher potential to get a lower grade, which was classified as a C or a D. Um, yeah, compared to students who only spend zero to one hours on their phone per day, there were no students who had a C or a D. So that was one, one thing I found. Um, the second thing I found I think was very interesting was the variance. So uh, students who spent zero to one hours uh, a day on their phone had relatively low variance. So their, their grades could uh, vary. Um, the variance was 2.5 or so. Jay allocated one point to essentially one third of a letter grade. The difference between a B and a B plus, in other words, was one point. So the letter grade would only vary 2.5 levels uh, up or down. But um, uh, when students spend eight plus hours uh, of screen time, um, sorry, eight plus hours on their phone per day, the variance actually shot up to around nine. So it was a three times, when the student spent eight plus hours um, a day on their phone, it showed that the variance actually increased by three times the amount versus uh, a student who spent only zero to one hours a day on their phone. Um, so that was the second biggest finding. And the third, I would say, was the, the lowest overall grade. So uh, the lowest overall grade for those who had zero to one hours of screen time a day uh, was a B minus. But um, for those who had eight plus hours of screen time per day, uh, their letter grade was a D minus. So quite a big difference in terms of the lowest grade um, that was captured, uh, given, you know, if you spend zero to one hours of screen time per day versus eight plus hours of screen time per day. So those are the three biggest findings um, that, I, that I uncovered in terms of like the correlation between screen time and grades. And of course, it's not a causation, um, don't have enough data uh, for that. But we did find that there was a pretty decent correlation between those, um, between the screen time and the grades. I think if I were to uh, come to a conclusion about the causation between screen time and, and grades, um, first, I'd have to have, you know, a, a more comprehensive survey. Uh, the survey that I first started or that I used for this piece uh, was very short, um, very quick, but uh, it, it wasn't too comprehensive. So I think I would, if I were to find um, or do a study on the causation, I would like to look more into um, what kind of apps they're using, uh, whether it's, you know, it's educational apps or if it's just social media that's taking up all their time um, and seeing uh, how much of their time is going to those different categories of apps. Um, but not only that, but seeing that, uh, see, seeing how that affects their uh, semester grades as well, not only their cumulative grades. So I would like to see kind of uh, in one semester if they spent a lot more time on their phones versus their second semester where they didn't spend any time on the phones and uh, comparing the letter grades there. I think that would uh, kind of get us closer to a causation hypothesis. Um, but it's, it, it is hard to say because, of course, there's so many different factors that can affect grades. Um, but I think, you know, starting off with more data and more questions like the ones I mentioned, that would help us get to a causation hypothesis. Now that everything's becoming more digitized, um, you know, like, like you said, online textbooks and study material are largely available online. And just kind of generalizing screen time as just one uh, factor, I, I think that's the wrong approach to go about it. It's just there's so many different things that devices that our devices allow us to do, and if we're not differentiating or um, specifying what kind of apps or what kind of purposes our our devices are being used for. Um, then it's, it's very, very hard um, and, and very in, incomplete to, you know, hypothesize or, or come to a conclusion that screen time has so-and-so or a certain effect. Do you uh, keep track of your own screen time? 
I do. <laughs> I do keep track of my own. Um, the last time I checked, I think my daily use was around three, three, uh, in between three hours and four hours a day. Uh, so it's quite, I think it's quite high. Uh, I did recently check and I saw that the average screen time for adults um, was I think two hours and 51 minutes. So I am above average. Uh, so it's not, it's not, it wasn't the greatest thing to see, but I am kind of trying to reduce the amount of time I'm spending on my phone. This has been Ed Technically. My name is Henry Kronk, and I work as the editor of eLearning Inside. If you like this episode, please rate and review it. If you want to hear more, please subscribe. Also, keep in mind that this show is available as a YouTube video on our as a video on our YouTube channel and also as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. The basic content for this video first appeared as an article on eLearning Inside, and if you want to learn more about online courses, technology in the classroom, and ed tech in general, be sure to check out our site. It's updated daily. If you'd like to get in touch with me, please send an email to henry at elearninginside.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at elearninginside. Thanks for listening.